Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on another one of those flea market finds from Scott. This is a Penguin 105A made by Olympic. And Scott found this one out at the uh, flea market in South Southern California. Seems to run nice and free and smooth, but uh, whenever you, you acquire a reel that you don't know anything about, best thing to do is, well, surface it. You never know what uh, might or might not be inside the reel. And uh, why risk putting line on it, taking it fishing, and then find out that uh, well, something's broken inside or something needs to be serviced in order to have it operate efficiently. Well, we're going to take the reel apart. We'll do that by removing all of the exterior pieces and parts. We'll show you how this reel was made, how to service it, and how to keep it fishing for a long time to come. If you like these types of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos, and you'll have an opportunity to see if that's a video that would interest you. Today I'm working on a 1970s uh, Japanese-made fishing reel. Tomorrow it may be the latest and greatest. Well, from pick a manufacturer, maybe let's stay with the Japanese. Maybe it's a Shimano or a Daiwa reel. You can choose to, to watch them or to pass and wait for the next one to come. I try to post frequently and I try to keep everybody informed as to how to service the reels for themselves so that you can keep your reels fishing. Alright, we took three side plate screws off. That should enable us to remove the side case. And this is an example of why, even though the reel's turning pretty freely, you want to get in there and you want to go service the reel and uh, make sure that it's okay before you take it fishing. It's got a lot of dried grease in it, and uh, that's certainly going to uh, inhibit performance of the reel. I'm going to remove the main gear. Before I do that, I want to take the anti-reverse to the neutral or off position. That way, when I pull the main gear, I don't risk popping out the anti-reverse. And again, you can see this one in this case would not pop out because it's got a, uh, a screw holding it in, but a lot of times you're just resting over a stud like this. There's a tag end of this screw, or a spring rather, it comes down below here and rests on the inner part of the screw, wraps around this screw and it has a neck over here. So if you've removed that dog and you're watching this video because you're trying to figure out how to get it back together, that's how you do that. I'm going to use a penetrating oil here to clean off the old greases. Pay attention when you're doing this, sometimes there's a, a little uh, shim washer that goes on here that you might knock off as, as you're doing the case cleaning. The back end of this looks like there is a case washer. It's just sitting on the main gear. This is tarnished, but I don't think there's any dried grease on there. I'm just going to use a little bit of steel mold to ensure that that, that turns nice and easy. It does. And now we're going to take the spray of the penetrating oil. I don't care which oils you use or how you go about this part of it. I use penetrating oil to get rid of the old greases as best I can and I don't have a preference for which penetrating oil I use. Today I'm using WD-40. Tomorrow might be something else. Well that cleaned up nicely. You can kind of get an idea right here of the quality of the materials in this reel. This is not a, a poorly made reel by any stretch of the imagination. I want to use a brush now to pull through the, the teeth and then knock out any additional grease that may be laying in them that, the, that I was unable to wipe off. And there's a little collar on here. You should pay attention to that. If you take this off, make sure you know that there's a little brass ring that goes on the outside of that post. All right, those two are done. And actually, we can take a moment here and just put that back together again so we don't worry about where or how how to get that back in or where the parts may have gone. I'm going to just put a light coating of grease onto the shaft, work the shaft through, and though I don't normally do it, we can do it here. Put the handle right back on to hold it all in place. And then I'll put that into the side my parts tray and we'll hold that for the reinstall of the whole wheel. Next up, we want to remove the spool and shaft assembly so that we can get to the inner workings of the rotor. 
there's a tie down screw, it's a pin that holds the axle shaft to the cross wind block. Remove the pin and then pull up and out on the shaft. Wipe the shaft down, make sure that's clean. And then you can remove the axle shaft by removing the adjuster and sliding that through. I notice that there's one drag washer on the one side and a split ring. This looks like this has been repainted because we have paint on that spring assembly there. I wanted to remove that because, well, every now and then you get dirt and debris on the click ratchet. You want to check that. That goes into my parts tray. And next up we have the cross arm block which ambushed me there. It just fell out. So let's wipe all of the old grease off of that. And so much of real servicing is nothing more than cleaning, examining the pieces and parts, replacing any that may be broken. And in the real this age, you hope that there's nothing in there to replace because parts are very difficult to find for these. And well, then just moving on to reassembling with new greases and oils. Okay, this looks like a... Uh, deep socket is going to be required for this. So let's find the right one. It's always kind of fun fishing around in my little basket. I keep a basket of deep sockets right near, near my hand here so that I don't have to travel or put down my work in order to, uh, to take that apart. All right, I just tried taking that off in a traditional manner and it, it was tightening it. So this is a reverse threaded nut comes off in a clockwise manner. With the nut off, you'll see there's a keyway there. Again, this reel is very clean inside. We do want to get to that. And I think that's all we have. I think we have a bushing. We have a bushing, not a bearing, in this reel. So I've removed those two pieces, and now we'll clean the rest. So here's an example of a reel that works beautifully and doesn't have a single ball bearing in it. And you can put this reel up against many reels that have 13 ball bearings in them in today's marketplace and don't perform as well. All right, I'm removing the excess creases that were laying around in the back of the case. If you have a hard time getting to some of those, use a cotton swab to do the mop up. And if you have some stubborn grease, use a uh, penetrating oil to break that free. All right, so this was easy enough in terms of how the, the reel and it comes apart. I have a system of organization. Take pictures. You never know exactly when, but chances are at some point in time you're going to get lost. And if you get lost, well, the best place to go is the pictures uh, that uh, you took of how the reel was assembled before you started taking pieces off. So go ahead and do that. Okay, we've got the Pinion is cleaned. Use fishing reel grease as you go to reinstall. I'm using pen precision reel grease here, and I use an artist brush to apply it. That simply slides back into the case. And then on the upper part of the case, we have this shim washer that goes in next. You do not need to remove the trip lever or springs or bail springs or anything on a reel unless they're uh, performing poorly. So I'm just going to put a little bit of penetrating oil in here. In this case, again, simple design. You have a, a looped bail wire here, nothing driving that, and a pretty common setup for a bail spring on the opposite side. Okay, hold your pinion gear, make sure the shim is on there, and bring the rotor back in and on. And then you want to align the keyway or the hole fast so that it sits in the recess of the rotor, just like that. Remember this came off in a reverse thread, so you're going to go counterclockwise, you know, lefty loosey to tighten it. First time I saw this was on a early 1960s Chrysler that I owned, and on the one side of the vehicle, 
that he had uh, reverse threaded the lug nuts and it drove me nuts. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the tire off. Huh. Didn't take long to figure it out. Okay, that's your top end of the reel. I want to check this. That's going to require a snap ring pliers here. This is the Drag washers are held in by a snap ring, which has been repainted, as has the top washer been repainted. So we will assume the whole top of the spool, and probably the spool itself, has also been repainted. And maybe even the reel's been repainted. I'm not quite sure. I'm just kind of working the washers out to examine them. And we have hard fiber washers. So you don't do anything with hard fiber washers other than make sure they're clean. Put that one back in. Same thing with the metal. We have a, a bent metal washer here, Belleville washer that's going to put some tension on it. Then we have a thick washer. So this has only got one drag washer in the main system. And as much as somebody else may have liked that paint on there, I don't like the paint on there. I'm going to see if I can't remove that. I'm going to use the flat side of a screwdriver as a scraper. Well, I'm doing that. If you have any questions on this reel or any reel, if you are interested in knowing more about the Japanese reels that were made in the 1970s and 80s, when production kind of started moving offshore, if you uh, kind of want to know a little bit more about a particular style of fishing reel, just leave it in the comment section. I'll try and answer that for you. And we got the, the paint on this as well. I switched over to a razor knife just because it was convenient. It was lying in my hand here. And uh, we'll just put the snap ring back in. Start with the opposite side of the snap ring getting kind of locked in the channel. And bring the snap ring pliers over. Pull that in. Try and Snap, but these are mini snap ring pliers. I got the set of these four. I think they may have been about ten dollars or something. They may have come from Harbor Freight. Not sure. But in case you're curious. Alright, let's reinstall the axle shaft then. Our axle shaft comes in, goes through your uh, rotor, and we need the Cross one block next. We'll put some grease onto the back where it's going to ride in the channels. Face out with the slot and align the hole in the axle shaft with the hole there. Now, see, I didn't pay attention here. This is where pictures would help. Now, the question is is that the high side or the low side? of the stroke. I believe that I have it the right way. I will probably go back and take pictures if it doesn't work. Find your screw next. Load that in. Yeah, that's incorrect. I can see it from here because I shouldn't have that gap. Let's turn that around. And try it this way. That looks better. What was happening the way I had the other one set up was this was not anchoring into the, the bottom holder. That looks better. I'll still go back and check if it doesn't seem to work properly. And now we have to just align the stud on our main gear. We want to put some crease into the teeth on the main gear. And onto the face. 
and we can bring the whole piece over, visually spot it. Make sure that the stud is lining up with the the slot in that uh, crosswind arm. And then go to your porch tray and get the three screws for the case screw. So what have we done so far? We've taken everything apart, we've examined the pieces and parts, we've cleaned everything. We've even uh, managed to scrape off some of the overspray on the, the paint of the spool. I'm wondering if the whole reel has been repainted. It did a nice job if it has. I don't think it came from the factory with overspray on it. That wouldn't make any sense, but it's possible. This one in so I can move the handle out of the way to tighten the last one. So I'm looking on the inside of the case. The inside of the rotor, it's got that color on it, but it's not. That would be a little bit more of the overspray I would be thinking of on this one. Head near the spool now. You have a washer on the bottom of the spool as well. This has a D shape to the axle shaft, so there's one flat side to it. Find that flat side. Make sure that you come all the way through with that. Let's grab the adjuster now. Tighten that down. Make sure that that, that holds. It does, and then back it off so that you don't compress it. And uh, let's give it a try. Reset the click ratchet so that it's engaged. Well, there you go. All cleaned up and ready to go fishing again. It all snaps nice and easy. Scott, thanks again for sending that in. For our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. So everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. And uh, again, this is an Olympic made in Japan Penguin 105A. Be well.